62 episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast have been removed from the internet since his move to Spotify in 2020. The Joe Rogan Experience podcast is by far the most popular podcast, with over 2,000 episodes and having hosted some of the most famous and influential people in the world. In this video, we will look to uncover why each episode was removed and what information they're trying to hide, including one particular guest who had all seven episodes he featured in completely removed, Chris Delia. Let's start with the most recent episode to be taken down, which was episode 1458, with Chris Delia in April 2020. Joe has had Chris Delia in two more times previously being episodes 980 and 533, both of which were also removed. Chris is a stand-up comedian and actor who was friends with big names in the podcast comedy scene, such as Joe Rogan, Brendan Schaub, and Brian Callen. He was a successful and relatively popular name in the Hollywood and internet world. However, in June 2020, allegations emerged of Chris Delia sexually harassing multiple underage girls. He did give a statement denying these allegations. However, he also admitted that he had a sex problem. I, I, dude, if I ever make it back into Hollywood, which, uh, you know, you haven't seen real until I get back into Hollywood. These allegations were right before Joe Rogan's move to Spotify in December 2020, and consequently, none of the three episodes were moved over to Spotify. As I'm watching this happen, I don't know what to think, and I don't know what to say. I don't. Um, but I have, I'm going to say it again, I have personally never heard or seen him do anything illegal. That's all I can say, and right now I have to believe that. Legal information around the case was never released, however, Chris Delia was never convicted and still posts regularly on his YouTube channel named Super Good, which has nearly 600k subscribers. However, Chris Delia was blacklisted in Hollywood after the allegations, completely putting his acting career on halt and losing his popularity on social media. There's also speculation if Joe Rogan and his friends in the podcast scene knew about Delia's activities as they did seem close. Since this incident, Joe has not mentioned anything about this apart from when Theo Vaughn made a remark about the situation in a recent episode. Huh, that extra 12 months makes a big difference. If you're 20 and she's 17, people will get very upset with you. Even in places where it's legal, where, where it is legal in a few places, which is kind of weird. Yeah, and if you are weird. 35 and she's 17, you can't be a comedian anymore. I'll no. tell you that. Uh, are you sure? I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I who know. knows, Ralph? Who knows? I don't know. Alex Jones. The next most recent episode to be banned is from the infamous Alex Jones with episode 1255 and 911, with Eddie Bravo both being banned. Alex Jones is the host of Infowars, a radio show based around conspiracy theories, with his appearances on Joe Rogan setting the internet alight. I'm kind of... <laughs> In that. The episodes still remain on YouTube as they are all very popular. Alex Jones is an extremely controversial figure and has always battled deplatforming. However, he's also a very popular figure. Episode 1255 has 33 million views, being the fifth most viewed JRE episode on YouTube. Moreover, there is some validity to some of Alex Jones' claims, such as when he predicted the Twin Tower explosions. We know the government's planning terrorism. We know Oklahoma City and World Trade Center was terrorism. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun. If you do it, we're going to blame you because we know who's up to it. Or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden who was a known CIA asset in the 80s. I did two and a half hours specifically saying they're going to blow up the World Trade Center. Call the White House, tell them don't blow up the World Trade Center. Or when he uncovered a satanic cult. Alex Jones, he's he's made some mistakes and some big ones, but he's also actually exposed some real shit, and he owns up to the mistakes he's made. They're not good. He doesn't think they're good. The, there's a thing about finding conspiracies everywhere that's not good for your brain. I really believe this. 
I think that if you go looking for those things and that's all you look for and you look for them all the time, you can get real paranoid and real crazy. And then uh, there's also a bunch of people that are trying to stop you from doing that because you do expose some crazy yeah. shit. You know, he was talking about Epstein a long time ago. I know. A long time ago. He was saying there is a fucking island and, the, and they take all these rich politicians and, and some celebrities and they bang these kids. And I was like, come on. He was telling me this a long time ago. However, if CMT could not win the battle in court surrounding his statements about the Sandy Hook shooting, and as a result, was cancelled. It seems that Spotify didn't want to completely remove Alex Jones because he is too popular, but at the same time, he's too hot and controversial for Spotify to allow all the episodes on the platform. Hence, they decided to remove two out of three of the episodes. Owen Benjamin then we have the episodes with Owen Benjamin, which include episode 1093 with Kurt Metzger, released in March 2018, as well as episodes 1033 and 998. Owen Benjamin is a conspiracy theorist, actor, and stand-up comedian who also more recently has become a cult leader for something called Bear Taria, which we will get into in a minute. Owen was first cancelled and blacklisted in Hollywood in 2017 after he disagreed with a prominent figure in Hollywood who said it was fine for their three-year-old son to transition to a girl and planned on giving him hormone-changing therapy. However, soon after he began to go on a free speech crusade and essentially tried to be as offensive as possible on Twitter and other social media platforms. This led to Joe Rogan staging an intervention in which he told Owen Benjamin to chill on Twitter. I wanted to talk to you about social media. Okay. Because I, I love you. I, I love you too. I think you're a very good guy. I really do. But you are the worst representative of yourself on social media. I'm a bad it's, lawyer it's, it's myself. A, it's a bad form of getting out tricky ideas. It's a bad form. It's just right. not good. You know, you have to really think about what you're saying. However, this ultimately fell on deaf ears, and in May 2019, Owen Benjamin was banned from Twitter and also demonetized and restricted on YouTube. And hence, when Joe moved to Spotify in 2020, none of the episodes with Owen Benjamin were moved over. He also started to really go after Joe Rogan, and it seems like he's honestly gone insane. How can you follow Joe Rogan? He's five foot six. What leader? If I was standing in front of Joe Rogan, I would think he disappeared. I would be like, where's my friend Joe Rogan? And someone would be like, way down there. I'd be like, where? No, like men are right here. Like, where's Joe Rogan? He currently is a cult leader for Bear Taria, as mentioned, which seems to have its own compound and is hosting his own musical festival. The cult seems to be based around flat earth, anti-government, and crazy conspiracy theories. Here's a clip of Joe Rogan talking about his friend was gone insane and is very likely talking about Owen Benjamin. When did we give Owen? What did he give Owen? Oh, I think just one. He ruined his but life. It would have been about 200 to 250. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, I think I heard that the podcast. Guy op you say like 250. Opened the door and went out. Uh, Joey made a video, but the, the, the day changed Owen's life. <laughs> like, literally, f the guy's head up. Like, yeah. he went outside and he vanished. He's gone. Owen, we feeling all right? Rumble, yeah, I'm just going to get some air. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking crazy high though. Okay, you want this me to? Is... You want more, more water? Yeah. Okay, nice. let's do some water. Yeah, you just oh, relax. Man. This is the devil here tonight. Get some air right there. Get some air in the back. <laughs> and take your water with you, just in case you fucking, uh, you know, you want to dehydrate a little bit. You'll be all right. This happens. This day, I do a thousand things. Little stupid. <laughs> he leaving? He abandoned shit. Sargon of Akkad. Carl Benjamin, better known as Sargon of Akkad, is a large political YouTuber with nearly 900k subscribers whose views to most would be considered right-wing and extreme. Sargon of Akkad appeared on Joe Rogan in June 2017. He was a popular figure on Twitter and YouTube for expressing his political views. He is British and a member of the UKIP party, as well as being very anti-feminist from which he gained a lot of attention. One month after his appearance on the podcast in July 2017, Sargon of Akkad was banned from Twitter for a range of reasons, but the main ones being tweeting interracial gay p-hub to white nationalists to annoy them, as well as calling someone Jewish slurs. He would also go on to say, I wouldn't even R-word you to a British female politician for the Labour Party, who was making a statement that R-word threats were common for her. I think we should treat women the same as men. And that means if a woman is being a giant bitch, I'm going to be a giant dick back to her. Any questions? The question for UKIP's leader, will this plan work? 
Why would moderate Leave voters back a party like this, someone who stands on a ticket as a comedian who says that it's OK to say, I wouldn't even rap a Labour MP? There's lots of grown-up people out there in the general population who are going to say, oh, do you know, I think that bloke said something really stupid. Uh, but by the way, 90% of the rest of the stuff that he says is quite simple, sensible, so it's not a bad idea to actually vote for him. This, as you can imagine, was received with a lot of backlash, and he was not only banned from Twitter, but also Patreon. Due to this deplatforming, Sargon of Akkad's episodes were never added to the Spotify library in 2020. However, interestingly, Sargon of Akkad still regularly uploads on his YouTube channel, as well as having been reinstated on Twitter in late 2022. Gavin McInnes. Here we have another interesting story. Gavin McInnes was on two episodes on the JRE podcast, the first time in October 2015, and then again in February 2017. At the time, he was famous for co-founding Vice back in 1994 and posting provocative political videos on his YouTube channel. In 2016, Gavin then co-founded the infamous right-wing, male-only group called The Proud Boys. The history of The Proud Boys, which is what ultimately got Gavin McInnes cancelled, is in this clip explained by Anthony Cumia, one of Gavin's good friends, who was also on the JRE podcast. Well, listen. We were talking about this last time I was with you. Right. The Proud Boys. Yeah, yeah, started Gavin. Started off as a goof and then became like what the... I mean, they won't let him in Australia now. Have you seen that? No, it's it's gotten insane. Yeah. Like, Gavin is considered uh, like a war criminal at yeah. this point. Explain yeah. how it all started because people don't know. So we have uh, we had this employee, uh, Ben Ratner. He, Rat never talked about girls. It's like this really Jewish... Real red hair, kind of gangly, you know, kid. And uh, he, he liked going to Broadway shows and things. And we always questioned his sexuality and whatnot. And uh, Gavin really started hitting on him going, what are you doing? Like, get laid. A kid your age should be out there you're just fucking plowing through pussy. So he goofed on about that and then said, we ought to make a club called the Proud Boys. And that way you can learn how to be a man. And, you know, you, you, you'll get chicks and tattoos and, you know, drink beer and hang out with guys. As a joke, it was like this parody of a men's club. And slowly this fucking thing mutated into something. It got more members. Uh, they started wearing, um, what are those shirts the, with the yellow piping on the collar? And stuff. It's a specific shirt that became the uniform, Perry Ellis. So they started getting together at bars, you know, in the area in Manhattan. And, and how is this organized? Is this organized through his Compound Media show? Through the Compound Media show so and his was... own Twitter account and, and Facebook, which he subsequently lost. But that's how it started. And it never was supposed to go any further than that. This whole thing with uh, politics got involved because Antifa which is anti-fascist, started uh, uh, coming into uh, conservatives that wanted to, to speak. So Gavin was a conservative, is a conservative. He'd get uh, speaking engagements at schools. And Antifa would show up to protest him and try to shut down the event. So then the Proud Boys would go and protect Gavin. So then it turned into this because they're fighting with Antifa, they must be the Fa, the fascists, right. the Nazis. Um, and once that gets out there, there's no pulling it back. Consequently, as the Proud Boys grew and Gavin was labeled as one of their leaders, who was completely deplatformed in 2018. Gavin resigned from the Proud Boys in 2018, realizing he had gotten out of control, but the damage was already done. And in 2020, when Joe Rogan moved over to Spotify, both episodes were not moved over to the platform. Milo Yiannopoulos Milo Yiannopoulos began as a journalist and gained traction working for the far-right website called The Brett Bart News. Milo was first banned from Twitter in July 2016 for multiple reasons explained by the Twitter execs on the JRE podcast. He also uh, docked someone. He posted um, private information about an individual. So that was the second one. Mm -hmm. He tweeted to somebody else, um, if you were my child, I'd have dashed your head on a rock and tried again, which we viewed as a threat. 
And then the last one, we found um, a bunch of things that he posted that we viewed as incitement of uh, abuse against Leslie Jones. The reason for Milo receiving large backlash outside of his standard right-wing views was when he said often that sex with 13-year-olds can be beneficial for gays in early 2017, which Milo did later apologize for. However, following this, he had to resign from his position with the Breitbart News and consequently has become a lot less relevant in political conversation due to this in combination with his ban on Twitter. And so it was no surprise when in 2020, when Joe Rogan moved to Spotify, the Milo Yiannopoulos episodes were not transferred over. Kip Anderson, Keegan Kuhn, producers of Conspiracy. The next removed episode is an interesting and different case. It is episode 750, released in January 2016, with Kip Anderson and Keegan Kuhn, who are producers on the Netflix documentary called Cowspiracy. The problem here, no one wants to talk about it, because they're, they're membership organizations, you know, a lot of them. We uh, need to address that as well. You, you better take that camera and throw it away. Cowspiracy is about how the government and environmental organizations are blaming the climate change problems mainly on fossil fuels and are not mentioning the huge problems caused by agriculture and overfishing. Now, as you might imagine, this is not controversial like many of the other removed episodes. The reason for this episode being taken down is more unclear than the other previous episodes mentioned. Here are a few theories. Number one. You go full conspiracy theorist and say that Spotify did not want to promote vegetarianism because they are in bed with the meat industry. Now this, in my opinion, is unlikely because there are other episodes on Joe Rogan that promote vegetarianism and also the documentary is still on Netflix. So it's not like this documentary has been removed from the internet. Number two is that Joe found out information regarding the documentary and decided it was more a vegetarian propaganda documentary rather than a factual accurate documentary and so he wanted to remove the episode to stop spreading false information. The last and least interesting theory is that Netflix asked Spotify to remove the episode based on copyright claims. Clips were shown through the podcast and therefore copyright could be a problem. Spotify likely don't want to deal with any legal drama. Charles C. Johnson. Next is Charles C. Johnson. Now, if you search for him on YouTube, there is very limited information surrounding this guy. He featured on JRE in April 2015 and is an investigative journalist and author who also goes by the name of Chuck Johnson on the internet. On the Joe Rogan Reddit, there seemed to be a lot of dislike for Charles C. Johnson, and this episode in general, as well as it alleged receiving a 50 to 50 dislike to like ratio at the time. However, there is no way to prove this as not only did YouTube remove the dislike ratio on videos, but this video, including all JRE podcast episodes without 1 million views, were removed from YouTube when the podcast moved over to Spotify. Despite this, we did find some clips from the podcast on an alternative website that illustrates why this episode potentially was so hated. That, like cops are evil, that they're predatory, that they're dangerous. And it's obvious like why the Obama administration is pushing it because they get these consent decrees in where they can basically rewrite the policing rules and essentially take over the policing departments. Like there's this whole debate about the MAOA gene, which is like this gene that um, black American, you know, black, uh, you know, Africans have like much, it's like a proclivity to violence that they have. M-A-O-A gene. Yeah. Right. God, is that really true though? I mean, you, you look at all the violence and murder and death that's been done by the military and you think about how many people involved in the military sure. are white and how many people making the decisions are white. I mean, ultimately that's white people causing violence. Charles C. Johnson, like almost everyone on this list, has been banned on Twitter. He was banned in 2015 after tweets to raise money to take out a BLM activist called DeRay McKesson. He did sue against his Twitter ban in 2018, saying it went against his First Amendment right, but he ultimately lost the case and remained banned. In 2017, he would also receive a lot of backlash following his statements on a Reddit, Ask Me Anything, in which he said, I do not and never have believed the 6 million figure referring to the number of Jews killed in the Holocaust, and also would say he did not believe that Auschwitz and the gas chambers were real, hence being labeled a Holocaust denier. It seems to be a combination of these controversies 
on top of his general right-wing statements and his statements in the podcast itself, such as the ones mentioned that led to Spotify not moving his episode over in 2020. David Seaman David Seaman has had the most episodes removed by far, with seven episodes not being added to the Spotify library as we go further down the rabbit hole and we uncover more older videos that have been removed, it becomes very hard to find information about these guests. For example, you will find no actual clips from this podcast on the official JRE Clips channel, despite David Seaman being on seven times. Regardless, David Seaman was a journalist and writer covering mainly on topics such as technology, finance, and news. However, in 2016, after his appearances on JRE, David Seaman gained a lot of publicity for promoting the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Pizzagate was a conspiracy theory that emerged during the 2016 political election that a pizzeria in Washington, D.C. was the center of a sex trafficking ring involving high-ranking officials especially members of the Democratic Party. This online theory culminated in December 2016, when an armed individual began firing shots inside the pizzeria, but found no evidence of criminal activity. From there, it was widely debunked and deemed to be completely false. However, as mentioned, David Seaman widely promoted this conspiracy theory, and you could say banning all seven episodes, maybe they were trying to hide something, but I'll leave that to your imagination. Stefan Molyneux this is a unique case because Stefan Molyneux has one episode that was removed from the Spotify playlist. Stefan Molyneux is a philosopher and ex-YouTuber whose channel in June 2020, which nearly had a million subscribers, was deleted. This was the second largest YouTube channel to be deleted at the time after Alex Jones. Here's Stefan talking on the Chris Williamson podcast about his YouTube channel being terminated. Interestingly, this episode with Chris Williamson was also taken down on YouTube, but remains up on Spotify. Tell us, tell us uh, what's happened over the last week. Well, um, so there's been sort of a successive deplatforming-ish kind of stuff that's been going on with me and YouTube. It goes back to a year ago, February, uh, right after I... Um, criticized censorship at the European Union. Um, I ended up being vanished out of, I think, suggested videos, promoted videos. They took my most popular video, the story of your enslavement, and made it like adult content so it couldn't show up in the searches and you had to be logged in and all that. And that cut traffic quite a bit. Um, what did I, you I'm say? the kind of guy go, go like. To that. What did you say? You just criticized. The, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just criticizing the. Um, uh, the sort of ongoing censorship issues that were occurring on social media platforms. After listening to the podcast, here are the two main controversial topics that were discussed in the episode. The first is Joe Rogan questioning Stefan about his anarchist beliefs. It's not good philosophy to have a universal called the non-aggression principle, which you and I and this fine fellow here and the listeners, we all accept, right? We, right? we all here voluntarily. You don't force anyone to come to your shows. I don't force anyone to listen to what I do. So we all accept that at our personal level. And that's what we teach our kids, right? You don't hit, don't take mm -hmm. other people's stuff, don't push, you know, all that kind of stuff. The government is just people. How do they get this get out of jail free card where they can do stuff that is specifically illegal for the private citizens, like print money, like take out debts on behalf of other people? You and I can't do that. I can't go buy a car and send you the bill. Uh, and they can invade countries. They can uh, force people to pay for things. Uh, they can incarcerate huge numbers of people largely on a whim. They can tell people who are doing things like drugs, which is a purely voluntary form of enjoyment and self-medication. They can throw them in jail. Uh, I can't do that. You can't do that. If I'm going to pay for my kids' education, I don't get to walk up and down the street with a machete saying pay or die. I mean, but this is the way that we've set up or the way we've inherited society. Sorry, I don't want to go on too big a rant. No, but, but it's a good rant. It's, that is, that it's a good point. Secondly, Joe questions him around his misogynist claims, in particular that women are responsible for crazy men as the women choose to breed with these males. But you said some stuff uh, about women that I have even disagreed with. And one of them, you did this thing recently where you were talking about how the way to get assholes out of society, it's women's responsibility. Because women are breeding with these assholes and they're making it's assholes. It's not only women's responsibility, right. but it's a key part of the equation that uh, I think is not discussed enough, which the is word, the sexual choices of women. That expression, though, or that, that, that sentence is really critical. But the reality is, I think, and I think this is, you know, somewhat debatable, but I think it's fairly well established that 
Uh, in general, men ask women out and women say yes or no. And I'm saying to women, one of the ways that women can incredibly contribute to reducing the cycle of violence is to choose better men. Because there's a part of women, and again, this is fairly well established, at least as well as these things can be established, there's a part of women that likes the alpha guy. And, and I get that. I mean, men are attracted to particular physical things which Im indicate fertility, and women are attracted to particular male traits that indicate good provider. And again, there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's perfectly natural. But the reality is that we do need to be wise in who we choose to raise our kids with and who we choose to have kids with. Interestingly, however, Stefan Molyneux regarding this particular episode would later say that he felt that Joe Rogan ambushed him on this episode. Well, I did two really enjoyable shows with Joe. One was just in a hotel room, and then the other one was down in his studio where he fed me bulletproof coffee until my eyeballs rotated. And it re really enjoyed them, liked him a lot. And then, I don't know exactly what happened, but my, my guess is something like this. So, uh, he apparently is friends with Anna Kasparian. And... Ah! <laughs> and um, uh, from from the young young Turks, and I did a video criticizing something Anna Kasparian did, and then I think Joe went on a show with Anna Kasparian, and then Joe invited me down, and you know it was kind of like an ambush. He dug up every negative thing that he could find about me, and and uh, you know it was one of these like uh, hey you know. <laughs> Right. However, it is also important to mention that one of the main points of controversy around Stefan Molyneux is that he discusses the relationship between IQ and ethnicity. This topic was not discussed in the deleted JRE episode, however it likely does also add to the reasoning behind the ban and censorship placed upon Stefan Molyneux on social media. The US Army, for over 100 years, has been giving more or less IQ tests to people to figure out whether they're sort of officer material or, you know, grunt material, so to speak. And what they noticed was between blacks and whites, and this becomes this bichromatic nonsense because the, the question of ethnicity and IQ is a whole layer cake. You know, just very briefly, the, the, the very top, the Ashkenazi Jews. And then under that, you have, I don't know, the word Orientals kind of come out of favor, which is kind of annoying in a way because how do you differentiate people from India, people from sort of East Asians, whatever, the Chinese, Japanese, and so on. Uh, 103, 104, 105 uh, IQ in general. You've got uh, your run-of-the-mill vanilla Caucasians coming in at 100. And 100 is just, I don't know, it's just the, the baseline. They recalibrate it from time to time and so on. And then uh, below, I, I did some of this, I, I, what mestizos or, or uh, Hispanics sometimes called, oh, that's very loosey-goosey term, and uh, that's sort of 85, 90, and so on. And then you've got uh, blacks uh, in, in uh, North America, uh, particularly uh, African Americans, coming in at, at, at 85, and there's been some upward drift a little bit. Uh, and then uh, below that, you start to get uh, sub-Saharan blacks at 70. There are uh, pygmies at, uh, in the high 50s, low 60s. There are um, the uh, indigenous people of Australia, I think, in the low 60s. And some of these numbers, again, I don't have them all tattooed on my you know, yeah. wrist or anything. But So there is this range. It is unbelievably heartbreaking. I mean, just, just I'm straight up about all of this. Like, this is one of the most difficult facts I've ever had to absorb in my life. Furthermore, it is likely that those two topics discussed in the removed episode, especially when you look at Spotify's general stance with the previous removal of episodes, would indicate that this was enough for Spotify to remove this episode. Bert Kreischer. He's been on the show 36 times, yet his appearance in episode 525 in July 2014 is the only episode he has been involved in to be removed from Spotify. However, to explain the theory to why this episode was removed, first we must move ahead in the timeline to two episodes, with Dave Asprey, who we will first discuss as both his appearances on JRE have been removed from Spotify, and his story potentially relates to the reasoning behind the removal of the episode in 2014 with Bert Kreischer. Dave Asprey Dave Asprey is well known as being one of the founders of the term biohacking and the founder of the company Bulletproof, which sells biohacking products. Dave Asprey's first appearance was based on his pioneering of butter and high fats in coffee on it. The company Joe Rogan co-founded even began selling this coffee, called Bulletproof Coffee, on their website. 
However, problems began to arise after Dave Asprey's second appearance, in which Tite Fletcher, who is the founder of another coffee company, Caveman Coffee Co., and a very good friend of Joe Rogan, is also a guest on the podcast. First, Dr. Rhonda Patrick addressed it in episode 459 in February 2014 about Dave Asprey claiming false information, and then Joe Rogan went on to explain the issue around Asprey's claim about all coffee having microtoxins. Uh, here's the issue. Um, this guy is selling coffee, and now we're selling this coffee through on it that was uh, supposed to be the cure to this issue. So his his contention was that 70 plus percent, whatever it was, of all coffee is infected with mycotoxins, and they make you sick. They make the coffee taste bitter. They make you taste bad. You know, they make you feel bad. I took too much of this at face value and parroted a lot of the things that he said, and then we decided to start looking into it ourselves. Well. They've known about mycotoxins in coffee for a long time. There's a PubMed study from 1980 about mm -hmm. mycotoxins in coffee. It's always been an issue. But they've been able to resolve that issue with wet processing. Uh, wet processing, the, they know how good coffee providers know how to eliminate this from coffee. We tested four random coffees. Well, two random. One Starbucks, one random bag from Whole Foods, uh, one coffee that we sell, which is the upgraded coffee that Dave produces, which is good coffee, good single source coffee, and another one called caveman coffee. None of them tested positive for mycotoxins. And so, well, if 70% of all co coffee has mycotoxins, and we had three bags other than the upgraded coffee, none of them are taking his upgraded quote unquote bulletproof process, which he won't resolve, you know, he won't reveal what this process is publicly. And so I, I kind of feel like it might, there's some bullshit. Then, going full circle to the Burt Kreischer episode, Joe went in again on Dave Asprey regarding the microtoxins in coffee. So, what Asprey was telling us was that his coffee was uniquely free of mycotoxins, and that mycotoxins were what give people headaches, mycotoxins would cause you to crash, all these, all these different things he was attributing to mycotoxins. He was even saying that Point being, here's the point. He had no tests. He wasn't showing us anything. Like, like he was saying that all these different coffees have mycotoxins. It's a real issue. No one talks about it. But when you start reading about it online, you, I found out that this wasn't an issue at all. Like, this paints the picture of the fractured relationship that formed between Joe and Dave Asprey. Moreover, it is supported by the fact that Onnit no longer sells any bulletproof products on their website. Now, due to this fallout between Dave Asprey and Joe Rogan, it is likely the reason for both episodes being taken down is that Joe didn't want to spread misinformation supporting a product, which is claiming benefits that is not scientifically proven. Moreover, it could also be that Dave Asprey wanted to have the Burt Kreischer episode removed to protect his brand and reputation. That is somewhat of a long shot of a reason why the Burt Kreischer episode was removed, but it is interesting how Joe went in hard on Dave Asprey in that episode, and that now it is removed. Louis Thoreau. This episode was another big one to be removed from Spotify. Here we are talking about Louis Thoreau's first appearance, episode 463 in March 2014. However, his second appearance in August 2016 is still up on Spotify as well as YouTube with 14 million views. Louis Thoreau is a filmmaker, journalist, and broadcaster best known for his documentaries in the television series Louis Thoreau's Weird Weekends, which is when Louis explored various subcultures in the USA, and When Louis Met, which is when Louis would embed himself and extensively interview and document famous people such as Jimmy Savile or boxer Chris Eubank. There are two theories behind why this episode was removed. The first and more likely one is that during the podcast, they played a load of clips from Thoreau's documentaries, with much of the rights being owned by the BBC and not Thoreau. Hence, the BBC likely got the episode removed based on copyright. The second and far more interesting but less likely reason is the conspiracy route. First, they spoke about Jimmy Savile and Jerry Sandusky. Followed that whole thing about that one guy who was that famous talk show host. Jimmy Savile? Yes. Wow. That is fucking crazy. That guy was a pedophile, and apparently for decades, and it was covered up, much like the Jerry Sandusky case in America. For a lot of folks are aware of that, the Pennsylvania State, uh, the guy who was a coach, football coach, who was a, just a massive pedophile, and they covered it up. 
They covered it up so much, so I don't know if you, you're familiar with that case, but the DA, the guy who was a, the prosecutor, was trying to try to find out information. He turned up missing. He turned up missing and they found his laptop in a river with no hard drive. The second conspiracy ripe topic discussed was the JFK assassination and the Saputra film. He explained why he believes there were multiple shooters. Uh, Zapruder, uh, and it's the execution of President Kennedy. I've never Kennedy seen that before. With really? Kennedy yeah. Witnesses. That's amazing. You've never seen the Zapruder film? Uh, just like the bits they showed in JFK, you know, the Oliver Stone film. Uh, yeah. I'd never, I'd never seen, I don't think they showed that bit. Finally, they discussed Ted Nugent, who is a famous musician and political activist. Ted Nugent has also faced allegations of sexual activities with underage girls. One of the guys they questioned in connection with threats to the president was Ted Nugent. Did you know that? Question with... It was actually for statements that he'd made I about Obama. He got a yeah about Obama. Yeah. He got a visit from the Secret Service. Yeah, he said that he would wind up in jail if uh, if Obama was uh, elected again. You know, he would wind up in jail. Well, and someone... that was construed as a threat. Yeah, and I they think, visited yeah. him because I made a program about. He's another guy I, I did as when I, I started out working in TV with Michael Moore. Uh, he gave me my break on TV, and I worked on a show called TV Nation, and one of the early segments was with Ted Nugent. I've always had a sort of fascination with the far right. Yeah, he's a very fascinating guy on the far, on the far right, because there's been so much bizarre shit in his past, you know? Like, he, he adopted some 17-year-old girl, or became a legal custody, took legal custody of her so he could have sex with her. Is that right? Yeah, his parents allowed it. Her, her parents I, I didn't know it. that. Yeah. Therefore, it could be theorized that Ted Nugent wanted this episode removed in order to protect his reputation. Those are just a few of the potential conspiracy reasons why the episode was taken down. Ultimately, we do not know. I will leave it up to your own personal judgment. War Machine Jonathan Paul Copenhaver, but more commonly known as War Machine, was a former professional MMA fighter who was on episode 454 back in February 2014. The reason why this episode was removed is dark. You read this fucking thing today, this kid got charged with 29 felonies. What did he do? He's the one that beat up the, the porn star, you know. Oh, oh, oh the, the, they call him the war, war machine. War. Ultimately, I feel that clip explains almost everything you need to know. He sentenced to life, and it is no surprise why the episode was removed. Brian Dunning This episode has been deemed to be the most hated Joe Rogan guest. Brian Dunning is a writer and producer who focuses on science and skepticism. Brian Dunning, a few years before going on the JRE podcast, wrote an article called The Celebrities Who Promote Harmful Pseudoscience and Put Joe on That List. Consequently, on the podcast, Joe and Ryan really got into it, with the episode turning into a long argument. The worst part is that he promotes these ideas to the public at every interview opportunity, but gives himself the intellectual get-out-of-jail-free card of not needing any evidence by hiding behind the childish debate technique of saying, hey, I'm just the guy asking questions. God, this makes me sound like an asshole. Well, it's just factually inaccurate on so many different levels. I don't understand why you wrote it like that. Like, th there's things that you said that I believe that I don't, that I've never said that I do. What I'm willing to do is look stupid. And by talking about things and saying that looks like a controlled demolition, I know that puts you in the, the nutter camp, but I'm not saying it's a controlled demolition. But I say that not being willing to debate it and being insecure to discuss it rather, not debate it, but to discuss the reality of what you're viewing is silly. It's preposterous. It doesn't mean I'm promoting the idea that 9-11 was an inside job or that it was a plot by the government. I don't think that. I've never thought that. This episode is just seen as a bit of a train wreck online, and hence, it is likely that Joe just wanted Spotify to remove this episode instead of usually where Spotify tells Joe what episodes they are removing. That is a wrap. We covered about 30 episodes in total, but there is about another 30 more banned episodes going way back to the beginning of the Joe Rogan podcast, with even the fourth episode ever released from January 2010 being removed. If you want us to cover the remaining 30 episodes and discover why they were removed from Spotify, please leave a like on the video and give it a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this, 